Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel and today once again the EX5. Um, today I'm going to resample the virtual analog engine in order to increase the polyphony of a certain sound. I just found out about this feature and found it fascinating uh, that I once again uh, discover hidden features on this machine after many years of owning it. Yeah, let's begin. In this video, I'll resample a virtual analog sound. The EX5's virtual analog synth is duophonic, sampling it greatly enhances polyphony, but may or may not take away some expressive possibilities provided by the analog synth engine. Here, I begin by recording a short sequence to play along to the sound creation process. Now, let's edit the voice and select the virtual analog engine. On the EX5, one analog voice has two oscillators. You need to adjust the loudness of oscillator 2 to hear it. I'll detune the second oscillator just a little bit to create a richer sound. And just for the sake of this video, I'll use some pulse width modulation on the second oscillator, so let's change the wave type to pulse. Let's also use oscillator sync and frequency modulation, because why not? I'll select the filter envelope graph as a source for the depth of the oscillator sync effect, because we won't work with filters yet. We'll use the AWM filters later instead. Here, I'm removing the filter envelopes effect on the actual filter, so it will only affect oscillator sync. Now I can adjust the envelope itself. Let's use longer attack and decay phase and reduce the sustain quite a bit. With that being done, I'll set up a bit of frequency modulation based on LFO2. Let's also add some ring modulation and feedback, because we can. Introducing some pulse width modulation based on LFO1. And while we're here, let's also add some amplitude modulation. I'm done here. At this stage, we don't need to set up dynamic controls or filters. Let's head to the resampling process. Let's sample this patch. To do so, press the sample button on the top right. We can set the play mode to mono, which will use only half of the RAM. Now press the record button and set the source to internal, then press standby. The EX5 will now wait for your input. We'll create a multi-sample with one layer here, so we'll begin by playing the C1 on the keyboard. Hold the key for some seconds. Don't worry, we've got room for roughly 7 minutes of samples if you've installed the RAM expansion, that is. The idea here is to record some of the pulses the sound has, so we could create a cleanly looped sample afterwards. 
Once you're done, hit the stop button and then press exit. The X5 will briefly process the captured audio and then return to the sampling screen. For this example, I'll additionally sample the sound on C2, C3, C4 and C5. Be sure to change the RAM slot after capturing a sample, otherwise you'll override your previous recording. Now it's time to assign the correct notes to the samples and set up the loops. To do so, select one of your samples and press the edit button on the left. My first sample was a C1, so let's set that accordingly on the center option. Also, change the sample play parameter to forward loop or FWDLP. Now, press the loop button. There are four numbers displayed on the bottom of the screen. The first is the start of your sample, the second one is the start point of your loop, the third one is the length of the loop, and the fourth one is the end of the sample. Looking at the graph, we can see a number of peaks and valleys. The idea here is to place the start of the loop in one of the valleys in the later part of the sample, and then find another valley which leads back to the start of the loop. To set the markers more quickly, you can enter the numbers on the numeric keypad. This first attempt wasn't too bad, but as you can see on the right half of the screen, there's a gap in the graph as it cycles through the loop. This will result in an unpleasant clicking sound. Let's try to fix that. It's a good idea to look for structures in the graph which kind of look similar and then bring them together so the graph passes zero on the y-axis. This will result in a smooth transition. Okay, we've got the perfect loop on this sample. We can now go back into the sampling main menu and trim the sample to free up some memory. You can do this by selecting the extract option, copying the sample to the same slot it was recorded previously. If you want to, you can also name the sample, which will make the process of creating a wave easier later on. Last but not least, you can also normalize the sample, which means adjusting the loudness to the maximum possible value. Repeat this process for all of your samples. Once this is done, you're ready to create a wave. Press the voice button and then job. Press initialize and you've got the basic AWM patch. Now press edit, open the oscillators page and select the RAM bank in the left column. Then press the wave edit button or F3. The wave editor enables you to create a group of samples and assign them to a range of keys and velocities. Press the add button to add your first sample. If you hit the key on the keyboard now, you will hear your sample being played back. Go to the Zone tab now, we need to assign a range of playable keys to each sample. The first sample was a C1, so let's say that this sample can be played from the lowest notes possible up to an A1. Now head back to the sample page and add the next sample by pressing the Add button. Select the RAM0002 slot 
and return to the Zone tab. Our first sample keyboard zone ended on A1, so this sample zone will start on A1 sharp and end at A2. Continue like this, adding all your samples. The last sample will range from A sharp 4 to the highest possible note G8. Don't forget to name your wave. Once that is done, you can exit the wave editor. We now have created a playable AWM patch, so now let's add all that subtractive synthesizer stuff that we didn't add while in the virtual analog engine. First, let's add a filter envelope. I'll use a 24 decibel low pass filter on this sound with a slow filter attack the filter frequency will change according to key velocity. As I already did an extensive video on this, let's fast forward a little bit. Here's the result. Let's also add some effects and a control for filter frequency on knob 1. And that's it, here's the finished sound. We now have circumvented the two-note limitation of the analog synth engine at the expense of some of the expressiveness that engine does provide. But using the FDSP engine, you can find workarounds for most of those too.
yeah, and that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And wow, I reached 2,000 subscribers on this channel. I can't believe it. And uh, yeah, thanks for your support so far. And maybe I'll use the opportunity for some announcements. Um, there's a vote on my community tab because I turn on ads on my channel, as you may have noticed, and um, I'm planning to use um, the advertising money uh, for investing it into something you might find interesting. So it's not much, but I think um, it will be enough to fund either a Starton MK200, which is a very cheap beginner's keyboard, or an Intel compute stick. I might try to uh, run that battery powered and try to run VST plugins on that. Or uh, maybe the M Audio Venom virtual analog synth from the early 2010s, I think. And yeah, please head to my uh, YouTube profile page and click on the community tab. There's a vote there. And I think there are only 16 or 17 votes at the moment. Ah, oh, come on, you can do better than that. And uh, yeah, later this year I will also have um, the motor synth coming up, I think in April. And um, then there's the Expressive E, um, this uh, yeah, very expressive keyboard that uh, you saw on some YouTube channels for certain. I think that's a very interesting machine and uh, we will have that around June or July this year. And um, I will also do some more of Raspberry Pi stuff. Um, I will show how to use it as a sampler. And I will uh, try to build a um, USB MIDI host, um, which should be easy. And um, yeah, if you're interested in these topics, then consider subscribing to my channel. Um, you won't regret it. And as always, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support and see you next time. Bye-bye.